And when did you start building railroads? Today. <coughs> well, come on, John. You're the one that we're depending on. Swing that hammer with all your might. I know you can show them how to do it right. Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney magic. Whether they be singers, actors, imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. All our lives we've been so poor. John, let me show you what we're working for. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guests, members of the Grammy Award winning ensemble Sounds of Blackness to the show. First, I want to welcome Carrie Harrington. Welcome to the show, Carrie. Hi, thank you for having me. You're a singer, by the way. I need to add that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and musical director and producer, Gary Hines. Welcome to the show, Gary. Thank you so much. And Carrie is not only a singer, but songwriter and the group's choreographer <laughs> as well. That's true. <laughs> and also singer Jeffrey Jones to the show. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited about being on. This is actually our 100th episode of the Tierra Talk Show. We started in 2013. Oh, wow. One of my favorite animated short films ever by the Walt Disney Company is John Henry. And I'm so excited because you guys got to work on this project, which we're going to discuss in a quick second in honor of the 15th anniversary. But let's talk about the formation of Sounds of Blackness. I personally am a singer, so I love hearing harmonies and choirs singing together all different types of songs. So how did this group come about and come to be what it is today. Sounds of Blackness uh, began at our alma mater, McAllister College here in the Twin City, uh, and the organization is celebrating its 45th anniversary this year. Uh, obviously, you know, a lot of uh, new members and, and uh, yours truly is the only one on this call that's been around that long, um, but um, <laughs> we began as a group of students um, who wanted to perform the entire range of African-American music and bring messages of inspiration to people of all backgrounds. So uh, a lot of times we're almost miscategorized uh, as gospel. Now, that is a, a, certainly a, a large part of what we do, but we also, uh, Sounds of Blackness, perform jazz, hip-hop, blues, gospel, R&B, uh, world beat, reggae, you name it, the music, and hence the name, Sounds of Blackness, is as well with our nine-piece band. So singers and musicians doing the full range of African-American music uh, for people of all backgrounds. And you have recorded various songs and albums, which are all featured on iTunes and also their website, which is soundsofblackness.org. You've sung with Stevie Wonder, Prince, Sting. What are each of your favorite memories of working for or with an individual musician? Oh, wow. Uh, there, have been, there have been so many. I think... Um, I think my first one is probably Stevie Wonder because he was so personable and funny. I mean, and just working with such a truly, truly gifted individual. I mean, that was just, oh my gosh, that was just so, just an amazing, amazing um, session that we had with him. So I think that's the first. The second would be probably doing the Luther tour. That was just so much fun. Um, again, another extraordinary talent perfectionist, beautiful voice. So I think um, just being on that tour kind of uh, shaped us a little bit, our tour group, and it just was a lot of fun. For me along the way, it was just um, such a treat to be able to uh, perform alongside some of the um, people I idolized when I was younger in my formative years as I uh, just uh, dreamed about being um, in the, um, doing what, what we do. Uh, we just met such luminaries along the way as Little Richard and and um, Isaac Hayes and performed alongside, uh, say, Tom Jones, of all people. And um, we've uh, recorded with uh, Elton John. And all of these folks are folks that I used to listen to and admire in my formative years. And then to meet them and be able to um, 
and Android Weather was another where we could actually have conversations about music and right. about what their creative muse was. Just very, very um, experiences of a lifetime. I would, I would say. Right. Oh, and Aretha yes. Franklin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned at the beginning uh, Quincy Jones, uh, certainly, uh, you know, at or near the top of, of what's been, we've been blessed with it to have a, as a very long list. Uh, and of course, uh, we always give props to, right here to Minneapolis people uh, who signed us as the first artist on their label, Jimmy Jam yeah. and Terry Lewis. Uh, and of course, um, Prince, who actually, uh, and he still to this day teases Jimmy Jam and Terry about this. Prince says, well, I had him first. <laughs> Prince had us in the studio with him uh, doing the uh, some songs for the first Batman movie soundtrack, and uh, he had us perform with us uh, at the opening uh, of the, the Love Sexy tour uh, at the uh, Minneapolis uh, Stadium at the time kind of thing. So um, right here, uh, we've been blessed uh, with people that are from uh, the Twin Cities, um, uh, but who have, of course, uh, been elevated to international status. And uh, we're so honored and, and, and uh, blessed to have been a part of that. And you continue to perform all around the nation and the world. How many members is the total now for the group? Well, our grand total is uh, actually 25 with uh, 15 musicians, 15 singers, pardon me, and 10 musicians. So, uh, but most of the time uh, when we travel, since you mentioned that, uh, most people are seeing our touring ensemble of 16 uh, with eight singers and eight musicians. What are those rehearsal processes like for all of you individually when you kind of have to work with a new piece? For me, I think that because um, I'd say I've worked with most of the people in the group now um, for so long and or I've known them for so long, it's it's kind of easy to work in that type of environment where we're learning new things because we, we know how to blend together. Um, so it's just more of a matter of uh, putting, setting your mind to what you're trying to do and then um, being disciplined, you know, um, doing, like Gary always tells us, do our scales <laughs> and, and everything at home. But it's just a matter of basically um, listening to what Gary wants and then performing it. So I think it's not... It's not been that difficult only because I think, you know, we've been together for so long and, you know, known Gary for so long, know, you know, what he's looking for. So I think it helps when you know someone and, and you've been in the group for that long, like me. <laughs> I'm not going to say how long. But <laughs> and I think for, um, it feels like it's a part, being a part of a music clinic every time we have rehearsal, it's... Um, there's always a, something to be learned. There's always right. something to be gleaned. But it's, it's rooted in um, solid foundation that Gary brings every time of, yeah. um, of discipline and, um, and rigor. And so, yeah. and so that preparation is very important so that once we actually perform, then we can let go and just allow the spirit to really move. And, right. Uh, cared so uh so thoroughly and i just want to say uh too yes with gary's like 15 30 part harmonies <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> no actually honestly um yeah, so, sometimes yes his harmonies are well most of the time his harmonies are very um intricate which is wonderful but i have to um piggyback on what what um jeff said you know as far as um the history of our music, knowing what you're singing about, I think that helps a lot when we're performing to know the history of the songs, um, the, the meaning of the songs, and Gary does a really good job of actually teaching that before we actually perform or before we actually learn the song. So I think that's um, a part of what makes us who we are in our performances is actually feeling the music and knowing what you're singing about and knowing the history. 
So we come to 15 years ago, you were all approached to take part in a very special film, John Henry. Uh, for those who have never heard of the John Henry legend, we are going to do a couple spoilers here. So I really suggest if you have Netflix or an iTunes account, please go ahead and purchase Walt Disney Animation Studios short films collection. The first film on there is actually John Henry. Now, Gary, you were writing the music and lyrics with your assistant, Billy Steele. And Carrie yeah. was the singing voice of Polly, and Jeffrey right. was the voice of John Henry. So you all have very prominent roles in this production. Gary, can you talk first about what exactly the pitch was to you from Disney as as where to go with the musical direction for this film? Yes, uh, in fact, uh, the head of uh, Disney Animation uh, Music, our good friend uh, Maestro uh, Chris Montan, uh, reached out to us and and told us about this concept. Uh, and I believe on that first conference call was a director who you mentioned that you met, of course, Mark Kent, who uh, is just one of the uh, most prolific people and, and animators uh, ever. And uh, they talked about uh, the John Henry concept, and they had already been doing research for over a year, we learned, uh, in West uh, Virginia, in Big Ben, the actual town, where uh, the... Uh, event, uh, you know, it actually took place. And again, this is based on, I mean, certainly folklore has grown out of it, but there are those that, that Disney informed us of who uh, said that they are relatives or were relatives of, of John Henry and that, that the event was very real, uh, even given the fact that, that folklore has grown out of it. So they did a year of research before they even approached us about it. Uh, and then they had the the storyboard and all those other kinds of uh, cinematic pieces in place uh, and talked about, uh, you know, the music and then wanted to, if at all possible, you know, use um, even more Sounds of Blackness members featured uh, in the roles. And uh, it, I have to say this because, uh, you know, Carrie and Jeff may be too modest to, but, uh, you know, the, the speaking voice of, of John Henry's wife, Polly, is the great Alfred Woodard, um, you know, of, of, of renowned uh, Hollywood fame. And uh, so Carrie, you know, was right on par with her being the same voice of, of Polly. And uh, originally, <laughs> I remember clearly that um, they Disney had approached uh, and was considering like Denzel Washington and like Wesley Snipes. I mean, huge actors for the voice of John Henry, and they selected Jeff Jones. So, um, you know, that's some some great uh, uh, you know company to be in. But that was how the foundation was laid. Had either of you guys done something like this before, Carrie and Jeff? Because no. it just seems like a, such a different avenue from just playing out recording a song. Because you're actually you know performing as a character as well. So the acting has to come to play. Yeah, it was totally different. And I know for Jeff, it was really different because he did the speaking part. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> right. it was really really different because. Um, you had to make sure that you had, like, the character's emotion in your singing. And, it, yeah, it was just totally different. And then to see it come to life on screen was just, um, wow, it was amazing. I had done some, um, some voiceover work, but just for, uh, just for some, uh, some commercial work. And so it was a huge uh, leap for me and a huge impact. One of the things that uh, we appreciated so much about Disney is that they, well, one of many things, uh, they are so thorough and so meticulous, and they were, while they were familiar with sounds, they, you know, did their due diligence with us as well, and, and uh, in doing so, you know, learned that uh, Sounds of Blackness also uh, does theatrical stage productions, and so that our singers also had acting in the stage, and as Jeff mentioned, voiceover experience and that kind of thing, so all of those things went into it, so nothing that they decided was, was, was arbitrary or taken lightly. Was the opening for the film in California that you guys got to attend? Uh, yes, it was. Wasn't I believe it that was in L.A., the Baldwin Hills, right? With all the yeah. students. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so there was a big premiere uh, there, uh, Tammy, and um, at Baldwin Hills, uh, the Magic Johnson Theaters uh, in L.A. Yeah. And I forget how many thousand students they had. And, and it was uh, the first and possibly the only time, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that we performed the John Henry theme song uh, before the uh, the screening sure uh, in the lobby, right, yep. for the students. And the wonderful thing, I, I don't know if you guys remember, is that, of course, some of the students had been prepped about the film and, and had gotten to hear a little bit, and they were singing along with us on, on the chorus of the John Henry, John Henry, and it's like, oh, wow, they know this, and <laughs> they were clapping and screaming during the screening. But, so, yes, that was um, 
uh, at the Baldwin Hills Theater. I mean, it was just, like I said, it was it was amazing because I had never done anything like that before. And so to hear <laughs> my voice with a, a character like that and then to see the character come alive on screen, it was just, I, I can't describe it. It was just totally amazing. And I mean, just to see, um, kind of be a part of that Disney process, yes, I, 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 I didn't even know how to describe it, just to say that it was amazing and wonderful. It was quite an honor. I felt um, the, the huge tradition that uh, Disney carried and for us to be a part of that tradition. And now um, it was, I, I was really quite uh, moved by that because we all grew up with Disney and it's, a, it's, an, it's an international institution, literally. And uh, for us to have a personal connection was, was really, um, I was quite moved the first time we actually saw it. Um, and I want to add that the, the hospitality that we were shown and the respect that we were shown throughout the entire creative process um, was, was amazing as well. So that was very heartening to see that this legendary organization called Disney, there, was, there were real people that had such heart, such hospitality, and such a, a feeling for people and a sensitivity for people. Um, it was just all around, just 100%, just a positive experience. Well, for me, Tammy, um, it was, uh, as Carrie and Jeff have, have so capably said, it was just a very humbling but, but overwhelming, um, almost surreal uh, to see the culmination of what was almost really almost two years of work because there were, and we still laugh about it this, to this day, there were endless uh, Disney demos <laughs> about um, the songs and, and, and uh, the structure of them and the lyric uh, and getting it almost right and then this modification. And that. So that went on like over at least a period of a year to a year and a half. Uh, and so finally, uh, as, as I think Jeff mentioned, uh, to see this come to fruition after after so much hard work for, for really what, what is just like a 10 or 12 minute uh, animated short, uh, was just uh, phenomenal and, and just such a blessing for us. And now I have three Disney questions I always end my interview with, and I call them the <laughs> Fab Three. They're Disney-themed questions. They're easy. Uh, so we'll start with the Donald one, which is, as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites? Oh. <laughs> I would have to say 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> Well, um, I grew up on Mickey Mouse Club, so first I want to qualify it by saying that uh, we used to watch it, uh, I think it was every, well, every day after school. And so when those actors went to feature films, um, I believe it was um, The Son of Flubber and The Shaggy Dog. Uh, since uh, it's, it's my turn, uh, I'd probably have to say, although it's really a, a difficult uh, choice, but to, to single one out, uh, I would say Old Yeller. And our goofy <laughs> question, what Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Wow, that's hard. Oh, that's a, <laughs> I don't know. Gary, you go first. I have to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to toss it to Jeff while I think about that one. Maybe he's got an answer ready. <laughs> well, um, I remember um, recently, because I've got kids and we all love the Disney movies. Um, I believe the movie Sky High. I think Kurt Russell would be my best buddy right now. Well, I'd, I'd say maybe for me, uh, maybe one of the seven dwarfs. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> Hopefully not grumpy. I think I would have to go with that one too, Gary. Seven Dwarfs, maybe Goofy. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> no, for me. <laughs> no, no, no. I know that's what I say. No. <laughs> oh. And finally, our Mickey question: If I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, I have to think about that one. 
Well, while, while oh, Gary's thinking, I would say somewhere between uh, speaking of the seven dwarfs, uh, uh, hi ho, it's off to work we go, <laughs> uh, and uh, when you wish upon a star, kind of the theme. Oh, song. that oh. one, that one is yeah. the the one. So yes, I'd have to say that one. When you wish upon a yes, that's yeah. a beautiful song. Classic. I think for me. Um, Mary Poppins, the movie, had a really big impression on me for, for Dick Van Dyke, mainly, I think, his, his performance. Yeah. And he did, uh, well, he and Julie Andrews did Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. That one, yeah. yeah. Right. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I know all those songs. Yes. <laughs> I was the only kid in my class that could actually uh, spell it backwards. It's actually pronouncing it backwards, which is... Dosis ala exeusis. Fragile calorupus. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, if, if I could, uh, Tammy, throw in a word for Billy, who uh, had to travel to uh, California today, um, and just uh, tell a, a quick funny story, um, speaking of When You Wish Upon a Star, when we first started on uh, some music concepts, you know, for John Henry... Uh, one of the things Billy came up with was this, was this beautiful uh, theme song for Polly, a love song for uh, Polly and John. And it sounded like just super Disney-esque, if I can make up a word kind of thing. And we submitted it to the to, to maestro Chris Montan and all the powers that be at Disney. And they said, you know what, this is gorgeous music, but this is not what we want. We could do this. We want what you guys do. <laughs> so... We laughed. I mean, they wanted, you know, the original sound of the time and that a period music. So work song, spiritual, you know, uh, the, the soul of it kind of thing. So we had to go back to the drawing board. So we, uh, Billy came up with something that was When You Wish Upon a Star Light. And they and Disney said, uh, nice, but uh, no, take it another direction. That's amazing. Well, I have to thank all of you guys for coming on the show, Jeffrey, Carrie, and Gary. Well, that, that rhymed. That, that was not in, intended to rhyme. <laughs> but if you'd like to find out more uh, about the Sounds of Blackness, head to their website at soundsofblackness.org. You can like their Facebook fan page and go ahead, buy some of their albums and music. I have some on my iTunes. I love listening to them, and I really hope I get to see you guys perform John Henry live at some point. Uh, would you guys like to sing us out, possibly? John <laughs> John Henry, John Henry, born with a hammer, born with a hammer, born with a hammer, right in his hand. If they steal our dreams, they put a chain round our souls. Somebody's got to stand tall. Believe in me.